for being here. Just a quick presentation. Carlos Moreno, your senior university professor, <laughs> international expert. Nobody is perfect. <laughs> ah, no. um, international expert of the human uh, smart city. You have been researching robotics, in artificial intelligence, and complex system. And in 2006, you started to dedicate your work to this. Um, you advocated for uh, a better understanding on the change of the urban environment and also making cities more livable. And you are right now currently uh, advisor, special advisor on smart cities for the mayor of Paris, Anne Hidalgo. Special <laughs> envoy. Francis Pisani, you're an author, uh, a speaker, and a consultant on information technology's impact on the social, the urban, and the geopolitical... I'm basically play. a journalist. <laughs> you have been exploring smart cities all over the world, and your work can be found on the blog City Innovation at Le Monde, and you also published a book called The Travel in the Smart Cities, From Datapolis to Participapolis. So we're here today to talk about uh, the new urban movement, and I'll give just a quick definition of urban movement, which you can comment on. Urban movements can be defined as a social movement through which citizens um, are attempting to achieve some control over their urban environment. The urban environment being either the built environment, so it can be uh, urban planning, for example, uh, um, uh, trying to fight against urban planning or to preserve it in the case of the Gezi Square uh, in Istanbul. Or it can be also, uh, the urban environment can be also um, uh, discussing on the, on the political, local uh, process, such as we've seen the movement Indignados, uh, which originated in the Puerta del Sol in Spain, in Madrid, right before the municipal elections. And it can also be the social fabric of the cities, as we have seen the movement uh, reclaim Brixton in the south of London, protesting uh, uh, against uh, gentrification. So my first question for you is, as you have been observing the innovation process in the cities, in what way do you think technology enables uh, a new form or a new generation of urban movements? So Carlos refuses to speak, so I will, oh. <laughs> I will, I will start. I think, as usual, we cannot only focus on information technology or on technology. Uh, and we have to understand the general changes that eventually information technology powers or enables. The two, two of the main many things we could choose that I've chosen are we are moving from boxes to network, which applies to cities, and from borders to flows. It, we are in a very different world, and uh, there are three essential properties of ICT which matter in this case, the architecture of participation, the horizontal communication which basically makes, uh, enables them to be a force multiplier. This is a key notion for urban movement. And the third one would be ubiquity. It's not exhaustive of any other approach we could have. It is clear that parties have problems and they are being substituted by movements. Movements, parties are for fixed elements for a long period of time. Movements are much more fluid, can react very quickly. And in general, and we do not pay enough attention to that, you do not have to agree on everything and you do not have to agree forever, which gives them a certain plasticity and in a sense, movements are the new Wikipedia of politics. In what sense? Because movements uh, uh, do not value uh, uh, academic expertise or professional expertise. Every, many people can be experts. They value practice, actual knowledge. And the last element I would like to give is that it is a problem, according to me, to talk about movements in general, even urban movements in general. And I have found not long ago uh, a categorization in seven families given by Armand Lecoz, who is the co-founder of Democratie Ouverte. 
And the notion, whatever, I'm going to mention them, but the problem is we have to learn that there are different ways of, uh, of acting at the urban level and, and pay attention to them, not take them as a global thing. So what he, the, the distinctions he makes are autonomous citizens, they, they do whatever they want to do, revolutionaries who want to hack the city, trainers who want to prepare people to do a better job with information technology to transform the city, transformers from the inside who want to, like uh, La Région, the 27th region in France, want to help uh, institutions change, geeks, we just, you know, do it, just fucking do it, as Maybe. they like to Maybe. say. <laughs> and uh, the collectivities with, we, we, that open uh, participatory spaces, and finally, federators who try to bring everybody together in events like this one. So there is a social change, there is uh, the, the technologies empower many people who had less power before, and uh, we, we have uh, several groups, but there are two, and I finish with this, two key elements which we do not pay attention, in, uh, we, we do not pay enough attention to. Who designs the software and who owns the data, which we sh should always ask, and we should begin to pay attention to assessments. We say this is good, we say movements, we say citizen participation, we don't actually evaluate, assess what is done and the, the good and the bad it brings. <clears throat> okay, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Francis. In my mind, I consider that today, 10 years after the emergence of iPhone, the connectivity on the users of iPhone is a real common point today around the world, all people use an iPhone, apps, or you have uh, any kind of uh, software platforms, many applications. For me, the most important point today is the hybridization between users of <coughs> apps and devices and smart devices and social movements. And uh, when I discuss about what is the <coughs> key elements to generate the urban movement, the uh, social movement, I think that the most important point for me is the convergence between this uh, kind of uh, application with the PEP factors. This is my conception. What is PEP factors in urban movements? The first P is poverty, the E exclusion, and the second P is pollution. PEP urban effect. I consider that today it's very important around the world to work, to involve, to develop the hybridization with the technology for citizens, for geek, for young people, for senior, for local governments, in order to develop a local movement about this PEP effect. The poverty, the exclusion, the pollution is a global problem around the world. When you examine the situation in Paris, in Barcelona, in Madrid, in Shanghai, Beijing, Mumbai, Medellin, Bogota, Rio, Istanbul, and other, <coughs> we can find always this triple effect. And this is, in, we have a world movement convergence based on uh, triple zero. Zero poverty, zero exclusion, and zero carbon. Uh, this is, for me, and the most important point today in order to develop the convergence of use the new technologies, the new devices, the new smart devices, and to be aware about the most important challenges for today and for next decade. Poverty, exclusion, pollution, and how can use new technologies for fight that. And, and as you have been exploring those communities all over the world, do you have examples of urban movements, uh, for example, in Latin America or, or in South Asia that, you ha that has been tackling this issue of the, the, the ownership of the tools that they are using? 
you will have better answers than mine, but we are, in, we are touching one of the traps of information technology and positive discourse about movements. It's very easy to get people excited and they will move, they will mobilize, and we have seen that in the uh, Arab Spring with the results we know for now. And uh, what is difficult is to move, if I may say so, from a movement to a citizen's engagement. And I was yesterday in a very small town of France, which is called Anglet, between near Biarritz, that everybody might know, and they have installed a, a software which is called Popvox, which uh, facilitates uh, communication between the municipal authorities and the people. And after, I think three years, but I may be wrong about that, they have found that their, the participation is 2%. And they are disappointed. And so you may have better scores in other places, but basically, I don't know of anybody working on that who is actually satisfied by the real degree percentage of participation that does not change as much as we want. So let's go back to your question. Movements, it's not that difficult. The problem is transform the enthusiasm of a, that comes from a crisis to engagement in the management and co-creation of the city. Sure. I think that the, the urban movements around the world are very different between. Uh, if uh, we examine, for example, Medellin, uh, Rio, uh, Be Shanghai, and uh, Paris, we have many kinds of responses for that. The possibility to uh, develop an urban movement in Medellin is very different at the movement in, in Rio, for example. Uh, the possibilities to use technology is not a real problem. The real problem is how can we develop a real movement to engage people and to transform with a local government. How can we build the new policies? How can we develop new actions? Not for a few months, for three years. Five years, oh, ten years. This is very, very difficult. The example of Medellin is very interesting, but we have a social movement, a local government, with the possibility to build a very powerful project for 30 years. And today, this is a very massive uh, project with the participation of uh, different uh, sectors of population, intellectuals, professors, students, and uh, working class, and all kinds of people. In Paris, it's very different. How can we develop the movement after the Place de la République with uh, Nuit de Vous? What is the continuity of this movement today? It's not uh, really <laughs> a fact. I would like to add that maybe it's a mistake that we bring from the old world. We would like, as you said, you were interested in, we are thinking in institutionalizing the movements. I think this is dead wrong. Or I think this is not that easy or the answer is not easy. Maybe we have to understand that people want to commit on a limited amount of subject of topics for a limited amount of time and then transform. Limitedness without transformation is not very sexy. But, but limitedness with the possibility of changing is exciting. But as, you've, as you said, that the, the challenges that the, ta that the cities are facing are quite the same. Do you think the, the possibility of expanding for urban movement would be to create a network like between those movements happening in different metropolises and cities all over the world? What do you think they can achieve if they manage to create such network? Yeah, I think that today the most important challenge for us, for you, for all people, is to develop a trans-urban network, not a transnational movement. I don't believe that there are transnational movement. Transnational, transnational, national state, countries. What is? What means? Today, I think that the most important is to develop 
uh, transurban movement. And for that, it's very important to develop a powerful network. Uh, this is not on, on network, many, many kinds of network. The network of activists, the network of intellectuals, the network of mayors, the network of policymakers, uh, all kinds of... It's not possible today to define a global roadmap in order to build a transformation, uh, an international transformation. I think that today we have the C40 Cities Network uh, led by uh, Ms. Hidalgo. This is very important network of cities fight against climate change. And we have other kind of network, urban networks we share. This is international uh, network with the activists. And it's very important for me to develop the concept of hybridization. How can we develop this hybridization between the movement as we share and the movement as C40 Cities Network. It is very important to develop the in real convergence for that. Three things. One, between 2011 and 2014, Facebook users multiplied by two or three their international contacts. So we have tools, we have an example of tools that facilitate this kind of communication. Second, what has happened through the hugest thing I have personally witnessed, which is the movement, uh, the opposition movement to the, to the war in Iraq in 2003, if I'm not mistaken. Nothing. I mean, it was positive, it, but it did not change much. And three, I don't think that uh, inst going to, I have said that, I'll try to say it in another manner, institutionalizing what we are doing is helpful. I think that we need platforms in which we can exchange experiments, we need events in which we can, during which we can communicate with people, we have to be open to what happens elsewhere, and, and then we'll see what happens 20, 30, 50 years from now. But let's start with a limited ambition that we can actually materialize. Thank you very much. And when we prepared the session, I asked you to, because uh, as you may have noticed, I, I know that you have been uh, friends for a long time, and I ask you to prepare a, a surprise question for the other. What do friends do when they prepare a surprise question? <laughs> <laughs> so, Carlos, maybe what's your question for Francis? Ah, my friend Francis. Um, today we are having very uh, difficult situation with climate change and uh, I consider that the most important activities today in cities is to develop uh, the fight against climate change. How can we consider your participation around the world uh, for that? So I, this is a key issue. All what you can say about doing it is great. I think the problem today is not siloting again issues, but trying to get to the level in which we see the problem of the real urban strategy. Urban strategies for municipalities, urban strategies for metropolises and for movements. So all what you can say about fight against uh, climate change or climate uh, warming is great. Let's try to move a step for a higher in working on urban strategies that actually work and solve all the questions you, you mentioned during your talks. Mm. And so, so my question to you is, what difference do you make between citizen participation and citizens intelligent is it a useful intelligence uh, a question to make difference distinction to make i don't believe in citizen intelligence <laughs> i consider that we can very stupid even if we have many intelligent the most important is how can we develop in real social participation and this is possible for intelligent non-intelligent even stupid people the most important is to develop 
I, I the new kinds of involvement. And the intelligence is a very artificial concept. We are here you until tomorrow <laughs> night. So what about collective intelligence and, and what about the wisdom of crowds? And what about if we talk about the intelligence of cities, maybe we would like to take into account the intelligence of people. Anyway, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very It's much. It's all. <laughs> thank you very much for your attention.